After much anticipation, the first signs of Super Heavy V2 have finally emerged, marking a major breakthrough for the Starship program. There's so much to look forward to, especially the potential inclusion of Raptor 3 in this version, which could push Starship to entirely new limits. So what has SpaceX revealed about these upgraded versions? And more importantly, when can we witness them in action? Let's dive in on today's episode of Great SpaceX to find out. After a long and exciting development journey, Starship has officially entered a new era this year. The transition to V2 marks a major milestone, bringing breakthrough upgrades that promise to enhance performance, efficiency, and reusability. However, so far, these upgrades have only been implemented in ship. The next big step is the transformation of Super Heavy, the powerhouse that will propel Starship beyond its current limits. And now it seems that moment is finally approaching. Recently, captured images from inside the Star Factory revealed a newly placed ring stand. The camera angle didn't provide a full view of its size or exact shape, but the most intriguing detail was a note attached to the stand reading, Do not take. Cart will be used for 18.1 forward ring flange. This simple message strongly suggests that Super Heavy B18.1 is on the way. Given that B-17 components have been appearing and stacking since early January, with the final parts surfacing on February 24th, it's the perfect time to begin work on the next booster. Right now, there are two possibilities regarding B-18.1. It could be a prototype section like B-14.1 and B-16.1 built for testing purposes. Alternatively, it might be the first assembled segment of B-18, signifying the construction of a full-fledged booster. Either way, we can confidently say this marks the beginning of the V-2 Super Heavy era, clearing up earlier speculation that B-17 would be the first of its kind. Regardless of the specific designation, this is an exciting and positive development. The fact that SpaceX is using a different ring stand suggests a significant departure from previous versions, possibly involving changes in size or design. Looking back at prior discussions on Super Heavy V2, the primary modifications appear to center around the forward section. One major upgrade involves repositioning the grid fins, moving them slightly lower than before. This change aims to reduce exposure to the ship's engine exhaust during stage separation. In V1, the intense heat from ship's engines during hot staging caused slight melting of the grid fins. While this didn't compromise Super Heavy's ability to land, it did affect the structural integrity of the fins, reducing their long-term effectiveness and reusability. Another critical improvement in Super Heavy V2 is the redesigned hot staging system. The new configuration will be longer and feature larger vents, optimizing the way heat and pressure are managed during stage separation. This change will help direct exhaust gases more effectively, minimizing their impact on the booster below. Additionally, the new design is simpler and lighter, making manufacturing and refurbishment easier while reducing overall mass. Unlike previous flights where hot staging rings were discarded, V2's hot staging system will be fully reusable, contributing to SpaceX's long-term goal of a completely reusable launch system. Given these forward section changes, it makes sense that the ring stand setup has also been modified accordingly. Beyond these structural upgrades, Super Heavy V2 is also increasing in size. The booster will grow from 71 meters to 72.3 meters, allowing it to carry more fuel, rising from 3,300 tons to 3,650 tons. This added capacity will improve overall efficiency, supporting larger payloads and more ambitious missions. A longer and more powerful booster naturally complements the enhanced capabilities of Starship V2, creating a stronger and more capable launch system. And then, of course, there's the highly anticipated introduction of Raptor 3. Even after transitioning to Ship V2, both stages have continued using Raptor 2 engines. However, Raptor 3 was introduced last year, leading to the question, when will SpaceX finally implement it? 
In a recent Flight 8 update, SpaceX addressed S-33's performance issues in Flight 7 and outlined immediate fixes. More importantly, the update included a key statement. Future upgrades to Starship will introduce the Raptor 3 engine, reducing the attic volume and eliminating the majority of joints that can leak into this volume. Although this note was specifically related to ship, the same principles apply to Super Heavy. The Raptor 3's improvements, such as reducing attic volume and eliminating potential leak points, would be equally beneficial for Super Heavy's design. This strongly suggests that SpaceX intends to transition both stages to Raptor 3 around the same time. Another game-changing factor for Super Heavy V2 is Raptor 3's increased thrust. Each engine will produce 280 tons of thrust at sea level, pushing the booster's total liftoff thrust to a staggering 9,240 tons. That's 2.6 times more powerful than Saturn V, making Super Heavy the most powerful rocket booster ever built. And this might not even be the final number. Elon Musk has hinted at pushing Raptor 3's thrust beyond 300 tons, potentially surpassing 10,000 tons of total liftoff thrust. If this version debuts in Super Heavy V2, it'll mark a historic leap forward in rocketry. As for the timeline, if B-18 is truly Super Heavy V-2 and is fitted with Raptor 3, we could see it take flight by mid-year. Right now, B-15 and S-34 are assigned to Flight 8, while Flight 9 is expected to use B-16, followed by B-17 on Flight 10. This would place B-18 on Flight 11. However, some speculate that Flight 9 may reuse an older booster, possibly B-14, which would shift B-18's debut to Flight 12. If SpaceX maintains its current launch cadence, roughly one flight per month, then Flights 11 and 12 could happen as early as May and June. That means that we're just a few months away from potentially witnessing the first launch of Super Heavy V-2 and Raptor 3. With so many groundbreaking upgrades on the horizon, are you excited about the arrival of Super Heavy V2 and Raptor 3? If so, show your enthusiasm by commenting, apply them below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with every step of SpaceX's incredible journey. Before we get to witness the power of Super Heavy V2 and Raptor 3, SpaceX must first execute its upcoming missions successfully. First and foremost, the company needs to perfect orbital operations, including payload deployment and re-entry maneuvers with ship. The upgrades in V2 will play a significant role in improving these processes, and we can expect these tasks to be refined over multiple flights. Meanwhile, one of the most highly anticipated challenges, catching ship with Beccazilla, could take place as early as Flight 9 or Flight 10. Before integrating ship with Super Heavy V2, SpaceX must first ensure these critical steps are mastered. On the Super Heavy side, continued success in landing with Mechazilla remains a top priority. This is the foundation for achieving rapid reusability, and V2 upgrades will need to build on this reliability. The more consistent these landings become, the sooner Super Heavy V2 can confidently take flight. Additionally, Raptor 2 still has a crucial role to play. It must continue proving its capabilities in ascent, navigation, and deceleration. The lessons learned from its performance, whether achievements or setbacks, will directly influence Raptor 3's final refinements before deployment. Furthermore, engine reusability demonstrated in Flight 7 should be expanded upon to pave the way for a future where Raptor 3 achieves full-scale rapid reusability. In short, while older boosters in Raptor 2 will remain in use for now, Flights 8 through 10 or even Flight 11 will serve as the bridge to the true V2 era. The excitement is building. Let's see how SpaceX delivers on these crucial missions. As we witness the end of an era and the dawn of a new, another key figure in NASA's leadership has stepped down. On the 19th of February, NASA officially announced the retirement of Associate Administrator Jim Free, marking the end of his remarkable 30-year career with the agency. According to the notice, Free's last day at NASA was the 22nd. 
making his departure now official. His statement in the announcement reflected his deep admiration for the agency and its mission. It's been an honor to serve NASA and walk alongside the workforce that tackles the most difficult engineering challenges, pursues new scientific knowledge in our universe and beyond, develops technologies for future exploration endeavors, all while prioritizing safety every day for people on the ground, in the air, and in space. NASA Acting Administrator Janet Petro also praised Free's leadership, calling him the ultimate servant leader who always prioritized NASA's mission and workforce. She added, A remarkable engineer and a decisive leader. He combines deep technical expertise with an unwavering commitment to this agency's mission. Jim's legacy is one of selfless service, steadfast leadership, and a belief in the power of people. The announcement also provided a glimpse into Free's extensive career and contributions. Over the years, he played an indomitable role in managing NASA's operations, overseeing an annual budget exceeding $25 billion and leading over 18,000 employees. His influence extended to major programs such as Artemis, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services, Europa Clipper, and the Mars Sample Return Mission, and continued operations on the International Space Station. His leadership helped shape the direction of NASA's ambitious exploration and scientific endeavors. Jim Free's departure follows the recent retirements of other top NASA officials, including former Administrator Bill Nelson and Deputy Administrator Pamela Melroy. While NASA has faced its share of challenges and controversies, Free's contributions have undeniably left a lasting impact. As one chapter closes, another begins. Now, all eyes are on the new leaders who will step up and guide NASA and the U.S. aerospace industry toward new frontiers. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.